Hello, welcome everybody. Hope you're having an awesome start to your week. All right, so today we're going to talk about a really interesting topic called, the topic of today is, the title of today is, What is Negative Harmony in Music? So if you've heard the term negative harmony in music, Say so in the chat. Let us, first of all, hello, everybody. Say where, say your name, say where you're from, where you're from, and just write yes or no if you've ever heard the term negative harmony in the chat. Go ahead and write that now. So while you're doing that, in the meantime, I have a very special guest who can certainly speak to this topic to a much greater and better extent than I can. And I'm talking about the one, the only, the man who needs no introduction whatsoever, the king of music theory, the doctor, my good friend. Hello, Internet. Hello, Tomas. So nice to see you. Hello, doctor. All right. So we've got some responses from a bunch of people in the chat already about where they're from. We see Lars, uh, Dick Frederick. Uh, Dwight, uh, Lars again, Mario, Sebastian, Franco, Tam Rampler. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Quantum Chad. Quantum Chad. Is that sniper or snipper? I'm not sure. Uh, Gary Cook, uh, Alexis. Hello, Alexis. Hey, Mark White from Lincoln, Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, Matthew Schultz, friend of ours. Jerry Fletcher, a very, very new friend of ours. Daryl, Anthony, Alexis again. Uh, all right. So. Lots of friends. Yes. Yes. A lot of these people are people that we know and some perhaps new faces that maybe we don't know. Mm -hmm. And I see many of them have never heard of Negative Harmony. So they are here in for a surprise. Yes, I and think they are. Guys, if you never heard of Negative Harmony, sorry to interrupt, but you never heard of Negative Harmony, better <laughs> because there's so much wrong stuff out there. <laughs> when, uh, when I was reaching the topic at the beginning, it was like more than half the thing you were seeing or reading were completely wrong and no idea what they were saying. <laughs> so it's better if you've never heard of it already. Much better. So, Doctor, in a, can you summarize or define in just a few words, if I don't know if it can be defined that briefly, what is, in a nutshell, negative? Give us an introduction. What is negative harmony? Very good. So the idea is this. Every every melody or chord progression you play expresses a feeling or a general mood, okay? I mean, with just a chord or two, it's hard to be super precise on the kind of emotion you want to convey. But there is a general feeling. I mean, a major chord sounds happy, a minor chord doesn't sound happy, okay? And all this kind of thing. Negative harmony is a tentative, an, an, an idea that... that in which you take this music you already have and you quite literally flip it on its head and you get the opposite feeling. Okay, so you create a new piece of music from an old piece of music that has the opposite feeling. Of course, again, opposite feeling, loosely defined, okay, but you're going to see that um, it gives a very good contrasting feeling, like kind of complementary colors, if you want, in, in visual arts, okay, like... Uh, um, you have red and the complementary is green and so on and so forth. And so you get colors that are completely different and kind of opposite. Okay. So indeed, I would prefer to call these uh, complementary harmony or even inverse harmony, as you're going to see in a moment. Uh, but negative harmony stuck. It's not the best term. Okay. Because, but, but I mean, why not? Okay. So. These works, uh, again, I haven't explained yet how to do it. That in a moment, okay? I'm just explaining what it is first. And this will work for any chord progression or for any melody that you can write, okay? Then there is another concept called negative rhythm, which is something I invented inspired by this, but that's something we are not going to do today because it's too long, <laughs> okay? But just if you, if you find that. Anyway, makes sense so far. So that's loosely defined. Now, how do you do it? Well, the idea is that you literally flip melodies and harmonies on their head. So you, you, do, you invert all the notes 
upside down. Okay, I'm going to explain how in a moment. And the important point is that you have to do it in a very specific way. Okay, so let's say we are in the C major key. Just to make an example, this can work in any key, okay? But you need, but you need to have a starting point, okay? In the C major key, your notes are C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Everybody good so far? Okay, I, I guess so, okay? I'm going to take this piece of advanced technology, okay? And I'm going to write down the notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, okay? Just so that we have an idea. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Ba -bam. And let's say your melody or your chords are in this key. So right now we are not using any other note, okay? Later we're going to do it with any note, but right now we're going to stay in here, okay? Good. So the idea is that we want to flip your melody upside down. So every note is going to become another note. And when the original melody was going up, you would be going down. But the important point is that you have to flip this melody along a specific axis. The axis is just before the E note. Okay, and technically it's between the E flat and the E note. So between the major third and the minor third of the uh, key. Make sense? So let me do the diagram in a clearer way, <laughs> okay? Because I was talking, I didn't think, hey, I need this step, I need a specific thing for the next step. So let me just redo it very rapidly, okay? C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So I, I put in the chromatic notes, okay? There's a, there's a C sharp here, there is a D sharp E flat here, there's an F sharp there, okay. I flip everything between E and E flat with this note here being E flat. And I flip it chromatically, meaning I literally count the half steps before and after. So E becomes E flat. So if I, my original melody at the E note or my original chord or harmony at the E note, the new harmony will have the E flat note instead. Okay? I'm not great at writing <laughs> from the other side. Make sense? So let's do it for all the other notes. The D, D note has to flip. The D note, you see, is two notes, the second note below the, mm, the axis. So I need to change it in the second note above the axis, which is F. So D will become F. OK. F, it's two notes above the axis. So it will become the note, two, two notes below the axis. So F will become D. And I do this for all the notes, OK? C is the fourth note below, and it becomes the fourth note above. So essentially, C and G move into each other. Why there? That's a good question and a timely one. <laughs> exactly. That's a good point. Why there? Because uh, when you when you go around, people will say, flip everything around the C. That's wrong. I mean, you can do anything you want, but that's not negative harmony, OK? Because the tonic chord of the original key, we are in C major. Now, the tonic chord is made by the notes C, E, and G. And that chord, if again, note by note, goes into the C minor chord, which is the tonic chord, the first chord, in the minor key with the same root. So everything you had before was in C major. This will become C minor, as we see in a moment. The first chord will be in, in C major, in the, original, in the original harmony or melody, will become the C chord in C minor chord, in the C minor key you are going into. So every melody you write in C major will become a melody in C minor. Every, every harmony you write in C major will become a mm, harmony in C minor. And by the way, and vice versa, because everything goes both ways. OK? So why that? Because it works. Because you want the opposite melody with the opposite feeling, in a sense, and you want to stay in the same key. Okay, because that's where you have the, the, the biggest impact. If you change key, you have a change of melody and a change of key, and it's confusing usually. 
Okay, so you, when, when you do this, usually you stay in the same key, which is the key of C. Only just re, you swap between C major and C minor, or vice versa. So using the parallel. Exactly, minor. yes. Uh, a will become a B flat. Uh, B will become A flat. So once I see all the notes here, they are not in order, of course. But if I see the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, that's the C major a uh, minor sorry c minor key okay now people go look at that and see like but that's like the g phrygian going down yeah but again does it does adjust the notes once you play the core the chord progression most chord progressions start from the first chord and in the first chord and so in the new uh key or chord progression we still start in the first chord and in the first chord so once you play this stuff it sounds like the original melody was in C major and the next the negative melody is in C minor or the harmony, same thing. So the idea is simply take all the notes and flip them around this axis. Okay. And you do that blindly. Okay. So you take everything you have note by note, you transform every chord note by note, you transform every melody note by note. You just do this mechanically, okay, and you get a new melody or a new harmony, okay? And the new melody or harmony express the opposite feeling as the previous one, okay? And again, opposite is very loosely defined right now because it's kind of hard to put feelings on a circle and then define the opposite thing, okay? But we can agree that they are very contra contrasting feeling, okay? This is a way essentially to take any musical idea and get new musical ideas that are related to the one before, but contrasting, okay? And again, it's the same um, root, the same key, okay? C and C. If you do it in a different key, you, have still, you, still, you have to flip it between the major third and the minor third of that key, okay? So you have to be in a key for this to work. Everybody with me so far, more or less, yeah? If you're if, if you're with me, write it in the chat. Where is the chat? <laughs> Somewhere in the video, there is the chat. Okay, makes sense. So let's do this first with a melody. Okay, so just it's simple. Yes, yes, the melody. One, one question that was almost asked in the chat, but not quite. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to restate it. Yes. How is this going to be different from simply using borrowed chords from the parallel minor? Yeah. First I of all, borrow... get to that as we go on. But I, yes, I yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say one thing immediately. If you use borrow chord, you, you know nothing about the melody right now. Well, negative harmony apply also to melodies and everything else, so it's kind of a more general thing. Okay, uh, I have a video by the way that explains all the difference step by step, actually applying it to a melody. But in a moment, huh? let's take a melody. Let's take a simple melody, <laughs> okay? I'm gonna start with C. I'm gonna go C, D, C, D, C, and down to G. Okay, really nothing hard, okay? You guys think for a moment at what these, uh, at what kind of feeling this melody express. And by the way, I'm gonna put a chord behind. Okay, it's a C major chord. C, D. C, D, C, B, C, G. Think about what kind of feeling is this. Okay, maybe give it a, a word or two or an image, etc. Okay, now I'm going to do this. Okay, and I'm just going to flip all the notes. So the beginning C note becomes a G note. I was going C, D, C, B. Okay, so the melody would become G, F. G, A flat, G. And when I was going to the final G note, the melody will go to a final C note. Since I was going down to this G, now I'm going up to this C. So once I flip all the notes, the melody becomes this. Okay. On a C minor chord. So, original melody. It's kind of bright, hopeful, take it easy melody, okay? 
becomes this darker melody. It has a completely the opposite feeling. You guys see what I'm getting at there? Okay. Simple example. You can do this with everything. It's very fun to take um, um, melodies you know already, very simple melodies you know already, and flip them around and see what happens, okay? And then flip the chord through. Okay. What happens if I want to flip a chord? Okay. That's, yeah, I flip the chord note by note. So let's say I have a chord progression and I start with something super, super, super simple. Okay, I'm starting with C, G, C. Okay. The C major chord is made by the notes C, E, and G. Once I flip it, I get the note C, E flat, and G. So, without doing these note by note, voice by voice, C major becomes C minor in the new progression. Okay. The G chord is made by the notes G, B, and D. Okay. Now, G becomes C, B becomes A flat, and D becomes F. If I take the notes F, A flat, and C, I realize it's the F minor chord. Okay, so without again being too uh, picky and do this note by note exactly, you think, okay, G major becomes F minor. Okay, so the original chord progression, which is C, G, C, becomes C minor, C, F minor, C minor. So that's the opposite chord progression. Notice how the first resolves nicely. This kind of strong, uh, um, optimistic feeling, and while the other one doesn't resolve the same way, and it's definitely, definitely not optimistic. Okay. So, this is how you flip everything, you flip the notes around, okay? For the chords, you take the three notes or the four notes of the chord and you flip all of them. And you can do this again for any kind of chords. Normal triad, seventh chord, quarter chords, complex stuff. Okay, no problem. Now, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to write the diagram for chords, which is definitely different than that. Okay, so you give me a second. And you see how chords change. So, and I do that so that we can experiment a little bit just with chords, okay? So, of course, remember, guys, that you can always go back to this video later, maybe screenshot the whiteboard, okay? So you can start it. Okay, so the chords in the key of C major are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor and B, diminish, triad, okay? Those will change and become the chords of C minor, okay? Every major chord uh, is gonna flip around and become a minor chord, and the root is gonna change too, okay? So the D minor will become the B flat major chord, the E minor become the A flat major chord, the F, chord will become the G minor chord, the G chord will become the F minor chord, the A minor chord will become the uh, E flat major chord, and the B diminish, diminish stays diminish because it's a symmetric chord, will become a D diminish chord. So that's what happens. These are the chords of C major, and these are the chord of C minor. If you want some a, a way to remember this is that you st start from C and C minor, and those are the chords of C minor in the up going down in the opposite order essentially. Why right? those are the chords of C major going up, C D minor D minor going up. This is C minor B flat A flat going down. Okay, so and of course I need to put arrows everywhere. Okay, so. 
I take any chord progression, any chord progression I want in C major, and I get a new progression in C minor. Okay. And it sounds the opposite in this sense. And I can take whatever melody I was playing in C major, do the other thing with the notes, and use the other diagram with the notes, flip around the melody too, and the melody will work over the new chords. Okay. And it's up to me if I want to flip only the melody, only the harmony, or do, uh, uh, or do other things. Okay. I can take only the harmony, get a new chord progression, and write a new melody. Or I can take only the melody, flip it around, and write a new harmony. Or I can take both, flip both, and they're still working together. Completely up to me. Okay. The technique leaves me a choice. Okay. So let's take a chord progression. Let's take a pop chord progression. C major, G major, A minor, F major. You've heard this. It's literally every other pop song, okay? Okay. If I flip it around, the C major becomes C minor. Okay. G major becomes F minor. A minor becomes E flat. And uh, uh, F major becomes G minor. So now my chord progression is. C minor, F minor, E flat, G minor. C minor, G minor, sorry, F minor. G minor, F minor, uh, A flat, and then I have uh, um, G minor. Okay. Is again arguably the opposite of makes sense. Now I would use a capo normally to play this, <laughs> okay, to make it even more pop, okay. But uh, because all, the, all those bar chords are definitely not something that a pop musician will do, okay. But I mean, it depends on you exactly what you like in your chord progression. But that's the opposite, essentially. That's a negative harmony of the previous one. Okay? Now, if you want, you can uh, take any pop song that has this chord progression, take their melody, flip it around the E, E flat axis, or the major third, minor third axis, you get a new melody. It will work now on this chord progression. See if you like the song. Maybe you have a new song. Maybe you don't. Okay. So far, so good, guys. It's just flipping around the major third, minor third axis. You flip all the notes, you flip all the notes of all the chords, and you get something new. Okay. If right now I started from C major and went into C minor, if the original melody and harmony are in C minor, you still flip around major third and minor third, and you end up in C major, which is the opposite. Make sense? That's the how. That's, that's exactly what I was just going to. Uh, no one had requested or asked if the same thing works in reverse. So I'm going to bring that up, but you just mentioned it. So yes, it can. you can start in minor and go to major. It doesn't work only one way. So exactly. Either direction. Exactly. Not only that, but I'm going to put, put a link on to my videos later because this stuff will work also for the modes. So if you have something in Lydian, in Dorian, et cetera, you still flip between major third and minor third, and you get to another mode. And the way this works, it's actually pretty interesting because this can work with the modes, with exotic scales, and you get other exotic scales that are coupled as they are the opposite, psychological opposite, essentially, okay? So it's embedded in how many ways? It's embedded in all ways because uh, if the original melody was going up, the new melody is going down, okay? If the original melody was uh, C, D, E, okay? The C note becomes a G note, the D note becomes an F note, the E notes become an E flat note. So the new melody now it's in goes down. Man. Old melody, new melody. So everything is inverted. The the major chords become minor, melody going up are going down. Um, major scale become minor scale and vice versa, okay? So it, it, you just need to take every note 
flip them around the EE flat axis. Incidentally, uh, you can know, if, if everything becomes strange at this point, you can change the octave of the melody, you can change the octave of the harmony. It's just flipping around so that you know what note it is. You don't have to be strict so that the bass line becomes the melody and the melody becomes the bass line. Some people do, some people don't. Okay. Make sense? If for the course you don't make the third, the text, okay. If if the code doesn't have the third, I'm th okay. You flip around because there's another question there, and it's a very interesting question, Thomas. If you can pull it up, it's the last one by Alexis. For the course we don't make the third, the axis that's only for melody. Okay, so you flip around the major third, minor third of the key or of the mode, not of the chord. If I have a suspended chord, say. If I have a suspended chord, it would be something like, uh, let's say, C sus4. The notes are C, F, and G. Okay, mm -hmm. C sus4 will sound this way. I'm playing this way. C, G, F. Okay. I take the notes of the chord C, G, and F. C becomes G. G becomes C. F becomes D. So the opposite. It's a chord made by the note C, D, and G, which is C sus2. So the opposite of this, it's this. You notice that this chord, C sus4, does not have a strong major or minor feeling. It's suspended, <laughs> okay? And so the opposite does not have a strong major or minor feeling. It's still suspended. Okay. And they can do this and go on and on and on. So, the first obvious application is to take a whole chord progression or a whole melody and flip all of it. But you can also do this partially. You can take a chord progression and flip only a chord or two and flip the melody only over those chords. So you do a partial reversal of the thing. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes it doesn't work great, of course. I mean, no technique works 100% of the time. But this has been used a lot uh, by jazz players, for instance. OK, and how? In jazz, you typically have stuff like 2, 5, 1, D minor 7, G7, G9 in this case, and C major 7. You hear this stuff all the time, no? Typically, most just players want, want more tension here. Okay, so on the fifth chord. So what some just players have been doing, some of them have been doing this completely by ear without thinking about the negative harmony. But then negative harmony came out and people realized, hey, that's what we are doing. They took the G7th chord and they flip it around. Okay. Or they take the G chord and they flip it around. Okay. And so what happens is that if you take the G7 chord and you flip it around, you get that the G7 has four notes, G, B, D, F. And when you flip it around, you get um, D, F, A flat, uh, C, which is uh, D minor seven flat five, <laughs> okay? And so this chord acts like the negative dominant chord of the chord progression. And sounds this way, essentially. Um, actually, wait. So. That's how it sounds. Okay. So rather than sounding, you're sounding. And you can expand by flipping more than one chord, not only the fifth, but also the second, etc., etc., etc. So you get more options okay but the, this to show that you can apply this to only one chord or two chords in the chord progression so you can get this kind of color variation in the original melody okay making sense it's a way to generate new ideas the job of selecting what ideas are good so if it's good to have the original melody or the negative melody or both or if you want to um, negativize only only one chord and which chord, or do the first half in positive, the second half in negative, or vice versa, etc., etc. Um, 
that's completely up to you guys. You are the composer, okay? You are the writer. The technique is just there to give you ideas, okay? So, like many techniques, uh, this works really well once you get some experience on how it sounds. So you start to know in what position you get the results you like, which I cannot tell you because you are different than me, okay? Make sense? So, um, you're going to get to the modern interchange in a moment, by the way. So, um, uh, wait, there was a question about which scale would you apply if the chords are flipped? And I don't see it anymore. But anyway, which scale would I apply if the chords are flipped? I have, I'm applying the flipped scale. So essentially, I'm flipping all the notes between major third and minor third. That's the right axis. Whenever there's people doing negative harmony with the axis on the root note, that's a different thing. That's palindromic stuff. It's not negative harmony. It doesn't work the same. We flip stuff between major third and minor third. That's the axis. So that the first chord of the original key becomes the first chord of the new key. The whole scale flip around. Major key becomes minor keys. Major chords become minor chords. And vice versa. OK? This is not modal interchange. OK, why? Let's take the pop chord progression we had before, OK? If this was modal interchange, I could say, let's take the A minor chord. The A minor chord is the sixth chord in the key of C major. In modal interchange, I think, rather than using that, I could borrow the sixth chord in the key of C minor. That's a perfectly legit thing to do. The sixth chord in the C key of C minor, it's A flat. So my chord progression becomes C major, A major, sorry, C major, G major, the A flat borrowed from C minor, and then uh, the F, and C. So. When I use modal interchange, I borrow chord from the C minor scale, and I borrow the same chord. I had a sixth chord before in that position, and I borrow the sixth chord from C minor. Essentially, I'm changing the accidentals in that moment to make go from C major to C minor. If I'm using negative harmony, that's not the same, because the A minor chord in negative harmony becomes the E flat major chord, not the A flat major chord. So, sorry, when uh, I play it, I have C major, G major, E flat, F major, and C major. Okay, so the result is different. When you, uh, when you do the modal interchange, what you do is you take the notes you have, whether it's a chord or a melody, and you put in the right accidentals to make them minor. If, they were in, if you were in major, or to make them major if you were in minor. So the melody, a melody going up, will still be going up. If the original melody it's C, E, C, uh, D, E, a melody using the borrowed harmony will become C, D, E flat. Same melody, but I change the accidental. In negative harmony, that will be different because we flip the melody around the major third minor third axis. So the melody was originally C E D, flips around and becomes G F E flat. Okay. So that's why they are different. Borrowing the harmony, whether it's chord or changing the accidental on the melodies, will not flip things around. It will just lower or raise some notes to be in minor. Negative harmony will flip everything around. So everything going up will now go down, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Now people are asking in, can I borrow a chord and then use negative harmony? Yes. <laughs> okay. Then you can start combining techniques as much as you want. No problem. I would recommend to start with a sim simple application of negative harmony. Take a chord progression with two chords, flip them around, hear how they sound. Take a melody with two or three notes, flip it around, 
hear how it sounds, do the melody and the chords with two or three chords, not more, flip everything around, hear how it sounds, start easy. Get an idea on how it sounds and you see if you need more. Okay, makes sense? That's how it works. I see some people there um, trying to use ChatGPT to do all these. I wouldn't, <laughs> okay, for an, a couple of good reasons. Once ChatGPT has been trained to all the internet, which means uh, in music has been trained on all the right thing and all the wrong thing that are on the internet, so you may not get the right answer simply because the training set for ChatGPT contains a lot of mistakes. And second, it's a great exercise to do this on your own because you get to know those notes. And really, it's just flipping around the major third minor third axis. Okay, just a flip around, okay. Where does this idea come from? Okay. People today like to quote, that was to say that everything comes from Ernst Le Levy or Levi, you never know how to pronounce that, who was a pianist that was born in 1895, died in 1981. His book, A Theory of Harmony, was published in 1985, so after four years after he died, which is a problem because we cannot ask him any questions. <laughs> so, okay. The book is not super clear and um, and it works with a theory of undertones, and undertones uh, do not really exist, <laughs> okay? So the whole thing is more of a sketch of how it will work if those things will exist. But there are ideas on... The idea was essentially to flip things around, okay? But that's not a new idea. I mean, people like to quote that because Jacob Collier uh, which was the guy who said negative harmony the first time on a YouTube video, apparently. Jacob Collier mentioned that he got the idea from Ernst Lee and Levy. So, but the idea is older. Okay, we see uh, you can find the same idea in 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 in, uh, in a book by um, Schillinger in the 1940s. Even if he's flipping on 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 the on the root, not on the between the major third and minor third. You can find. Uh, earlier composers doing these before the 1940s. I had a video with an example from uh, Rachmaninoff doing the same thing, okay? Um, so nobody knows where it comes from. The idea of inverting melody is really old. The, the idea of inverting melody chromatically and also the chords on the specific axis, it's hard to pinpoint who was the first one to get everything right in this sense, okay? And by the way, we know it's right because when you apply it it works while every other procedure requires adjustments because it doesn't work as uh as smoothly as this one so nobody knows where it came i mean who got the idea it's like many things uh, they are in the air and people pick up parts of the ideas and they use it and they do half by ear half by theory etc etc so it's hard to give a paternity the name negative harmony is from Ernst Levy and again I don't don't like the name I would have called it complementary harmony I would have called it inverted harmony okay I could have called it mirror harmony that would be a good one too but negative harmony stuck so why not <laughs> okay makes sense people asking now how will they apply this to harmonic minor the exact same way flip between the major uh, third and the minor third, okay? And you're gonna get different notes, okay? You're gonna get, if, indeed, if you get the harmonic minor, that's one of the nice things about it. You get the harmonic minor, flip again uh, uh, um, all the notes around the major third and minor third. If you were in C harmonic minor, the new scale you get, it's C harmonic major which is not a coincidence, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Makes sense. So the harmonic minor in C, C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B, C. Once you flip everything around and reorder, you get harmonic major. C, D, E, F, G, A flat, B, C. Okay, which is sounds strange because that's a major third. Nice, no? I mean, so try that. And I made a video on that, by the way, in which we also see the opposite of melodic 
minor, which I argue should be called melodic major, <laughs> okay? But you go and see, and, uh, and the interesting thing is that the melodic minor flips around to the fifth mode of melodic minor, which I will, again, arguably, arguably call melodic major at this point. Um, the name did not stack, of course, but <laughs> that, that's what I would call it if I could. Okay, mm, these work also for some of the, of the exotic scales. You have to go and see them on that. The point is you can apply this to everything as long as you flip between the major third and minor third axis. It's a simple idea. It can become really complex when you have um, other uh, lots of notes and lots of chord. Now I get a question here that will the negative harmony can be applied with the fusion style? Okay. The answer to all questions like will the negative harmony will be uh, applied with whatever, whatever, whatever style? It's always yes. Indeed, what happens is that there was a sax player that and I, I, right now I don't remember his name, who read the Levy book before uh, Jacob Collier. I did, never did anything on YouTube, so that's why it's less famous. <laughs> okay, and he applied all the negative harmony to the to a jazz fusion style by reversing the melodies by but keeping the chord the same so we're just we were just playing outside and use it as a, as a way to generate leaks that are outside the chord but still somehow work over the original chords and he was doing these mostly on the fifth chord on the dominant chord on the fifth chord of the key so it seems to work best on that okay so he was using negative harmony for melodic sax leaks so yes it, it works everywhere Sorry, it's just flipping around the notes. I don't, I don't see why it should not work in any style. It will work in rock. It will work in classical music. It will work in modern classical music. It will work in jazz, in pop, in country, in metal, in hard, uh, in, in in any kind of uh, hardcore metal, whatever. Okay, it will work in dance music, electronic music. It, it doesn't matter. If the chord progression before was in in the style, the chord progression other is in that style. If the melody before was in the style, that melody after is in that style. It's just the negative version of it. Okay, so makes sense. One thing that comes up in some of the questions that we're seeing, <clears throat> the question on Facebook, uh, how would you use negative harmony in a fusion style, which you just addressed, mm -hmm. and then there was the question about you know how to use it in harmonic minor. Uh, and these sorts of questions, I imagine more questions will come about how do you use it? And you've addressed it already, but I want to just sort of restate it uh, for people to think about this in a certain way. Negative harmony, like all music theory concepts, are tools, tools in the toolbox. So let's imagine negative harmony with a screwdriver. You can use it to tighten screws. You can use it to loosen screws. You can use it to pry open a can of paint. You can use it as a chisel to, to scrape paint off. You could use it as a weapon. Uh, you, you could use it as a shim. You could use it in many different ways other than what it was originally intended for. So like with any concept or any technique on guitar, any music theory concept, any songwriting concept, compositional tool, it's just a tool in the toolbox. It's useful to understand the original intention of the tool. How does a, how was a hammer originally intended to be used? To hammer things in, also you got the claw on the back to rip out nails. It's best to understand its original intention, get familiar with that, play around with that, become competent in that if you like the tool, and then explore other ways in which you could apply it in which you could use it. There's no rule that says because it was designed for this purpose to do these things that now you must do these things in this way or you can't use it at all, okay? I mean, you could use the hammer as a weapon or you could use it to break glass. You, you know, you could use it for anything. So I encourage you guys to ask questions and you are asking some good questions. How could it use it in this style or how could it use it with this scale? Can it be used in the modes? That's all great. Um, but the ways in which you can use and apply negative harmony or anything else is very vast. So I suggest learning it and then look at how you can apply it. Tommaso talked about you could use it for just inverting the chords. 
You could use it for just inverting the malady. You could use it in combination with other concepts, songwriting concepts, music theory concepts, etc. It doesn't have to be used as a standalone device or tool. You can use it in many, many different ways. So if your question is, how would I use it or can you use it this way? The answer is probably yes. Probably yes. People are asking. Um, people are asking about an example in my model in, of model use of that. Again, all the same. Typical model chord progression and say in, it's like Sidorian. Why not? Okay, C minor sub. I'm gonna do them just the triad. C minor, D minor. It's a typical Dorian chord progression, C minor, D minor, C minor, D minor, C minor. When I flip everything using negative harmony, okay, I'm doing this in my mind right now very fast, okay? So you may, well, guys may want to sit down and see what are the notes in C minor, what are the notes in D minor, flip them around the E, E flat axis, okay? But what comes out is that I have C major and B flat major. And I get a chord progression in C mixolydian. Simple as that. <laughs> okay. The thing is that the, te the technique is really simple. It takes some calculations. I'm not saying no. Okay. But again, you just take all the notes you have before, flip them around the major third, minor third axis, and see what comes out. Okay. All the questions you guys have in mind right now is where do I use it? How do I know if it's good? Okay, when where do I stop? Where do I start? But those are not questions about the negative harmony because negative harmony is just a tool, like Thomas was saying. Those are questions about composition. And those questions will be will have the same answer regardless if it if it's negative harmony, borrowing chords, uh, um, other techniques, okay, in, inversion, retrograde, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. That's why we don't answer them usually only on negative harmony. That's why when you go around and see negative harmonies videos or read articles, they just tell you, you just flip it around. I go a little bit beyond with my videos. As again, I have a couple of videos showing me working on a specific melody in a specific chord progression and giving you option and showing you exactly how it's done note by note. But, and by the way, the playlist, uh, it's just appeared, it should just appear in the chat, okay? So you want to get the playlist, bookmark it, watch all the videos, and you're going to get everything, okay? So, and Parenthesis there. People ask me, is negative harmony in your in your course? Guys, all the negative harmony stuff I know, it's on those videos in the playlist available for free. If that's the stuff I'm giving you for free, imagine what's in the course. But anyway, <laughs> okay, close parenthesis. Okay. I'm giving you all the negative harmony for free. Everything is there. Everything it's on, on, on the videos. Just watch all the playlists, do and, and do everything I'm doing. You get everything. Point is. You, to learn music theory, you need to do it in a few phases. The, at a certain point, you are learning the material. How do you play the chords? Okay. Then you learn the, the tools. How do you transform those, those chords? How you put those chords together? How you change things into another? Then you learn the composition, which is when it's appropriate to do all these, where I start, where I stop, etc. You don't, it's not that you have to learn them, especially uh, sequentially, meaning first learn all the chords, then learn all the tools, then learn all the composition. Okay. That doesn't have to be this linear. But those are three different things. Right now, we're talking about a tool. Because talking about when the tool is appropriate, uh, what happens um, um, when you use it, when you, when you should start, when you should stop, OK, how do you use it in a specific, in other specific situations, that will require making a lot of examples, a longer time, <laughs> OK, and a discussion about what you want to express with that music and all these kind of things. Because you, I cannot tell you if it's an application of, me, uh, of negative harmony, it's correct or not. If I don't know what you want to do with your music in that moment, and I see, hear the exact music you are working on, right? It's like asking me, I have this tool. I, I'm a graphic artist. I have this tool called complementary colors, where it's appropriate to use. Well, there are many uses you can have, but I cannot tell you if it's appropriate in what you're doing right now, unless, unless I see what image you're working on. 
and how exactly you're applying the complementary color thing. Am I making sense? Okay. Then again, I am not a graphic artist. <laughs> okay. I'm probably, the, I mean, I see as, as many, I see probably 16 colors. Okay. So, like most males, I see 16 colors, like the old Windows palette. Okay. So, I wouldn't be the right person to ask for the complementary color thing, but it's just an example. Makes sense. Okay. So, the negative harmony does that, flips the notes around. Major chords become minor, major keys because become minor, and vice versa, et cetera, et cetera. But where you apply it, how you apply it, uh, the exact situation you apply it, that's up to you. And there are many possible options, and you should try a few of them, and you can get ideas from the videos. Then there is the question, are there any classical composers who use negative harmony? I have a video on Rachmaninoff using that. I'm sure that people used it before him, but we will have to dive deep in the in the repertoire and then analyze everything. I've noticed this, this thing by Rachmaninoff because I was trying to do the same on the exact melody, so completely by chance. <laughs> it was, I took negative harmony, I took the number of melody I transcribed from classical music and I applied it systematically to all the melodies. At a certain point, I applied this to this melody by Vivaldi. And um, I got a melody that I already knew by Rachmaninoff. And that's how I knew that Rachmaninoff did that. Okay, so I stumble on it by chance. It's hard to find out those things because you need to know where they started from. The sort of the precursor to negative harmony, I mean, negative harmony is built a lot on inversion. Yes. So inverting intervals is something that goes back a very, very long time. Uh, Bach did a lot of inverting of melodies and intervallic patterns back you know, in the Baroque era. So we're talking about several hundred years ago, not exactly negative harmony, but the basis of negative harmony is essentially the inversion. And then it's been expanded from there, but you can find that going back many centuries in the classical period. Yeah. It, nobody, know who invented, uh, nobody know who invented inversion. The intuition there is that uh, if the original melody goes up and then you go down and you know, your melody goes down and vice versa, you get kind of the opposite feeling. Which again, it's true. It's more precise in negative harmony, personally speaking. But you can do the inversion of over every axis, and you will get kind of a degree of complementarity by doing that. Um, this also, by the way, tells us another thing. Once you start studying a lot, a lot of melody, everything else being the same, which never is, but everything else being the same, melody that are going up sound. Uh, uplifting i know okay positive optimistic melodies going down tend to sound pessimistic etc now no melody goes only up or down there's always a mix okay um but it's a nice uh, first black and white distinction okay and then again the, at this point there would be so much more to say to, to make this precise and to make this applicable i'm not even starting but again, generally speaking, going up, positive, going down, negative. Okay. So, makes sense? All right. Very good. So, Doctor, other than the YouTube playlist of free videos from you on YouTube that I posted in the chat earlier, besides this, do you also have some other resource that Maybe. people watching live or watching the recording can attain can download for free from you of course i do and you know it so you <laughs> thank you for the rhetorical question but i have this nice guide here because you see since we are flipping the notes around you need to know where the notes are on your guitar fretboard okay and not, learning the notes on the guitar fretboard is something that people um think it's hard to do you're looking at this and like where are the notes it's not obvious okay and so many guitar players never learn the notes on their fretboard and they always are left to learn the shapes fish around for the sound etc what i'm telling you guys is this you do what's written in this ebook which is free completely free go there at this link okay put in your email i'm sending it to you it's completely free zero obligation you do the exercises in, in, in this ebook for five minutes a day. In a few weeks, you know the notes on your fretboard. 
pain-free, okay? You just need to do the exercises, okay? If you already know your notes, download it anyway, do the exercise anyway, and this will make you knowing your notes much better because the, the thing you don't want when you are playing music is stop there and thinking, uh, where do I find an A note here, <laughs> okay? With this ebook, everything is going to be completely automatic, completely memorized, and instant recall of where the notes are. Thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, have downloaded this ebook, okay? And it works. I know it works, okay? Just do the exercises five minutes a day for a few weeks, okay? Very cool. Also, I have a resource also for you. It's very similar to the one that Tommaso just gave you, but there's a difference. Tommaso's free resource is on helping you to learn and memorize where the notes are on the guitar. So if you need to find where is B flat in the G string and you need to find that instantly, Tommaso's resource is a great one for you. The one that I have is a little bit different. It's also about finding things on the fretboard, but it's more about finding the functions of notes on the fretboard, which is a bit different. So instead of looking for where is B flat, I need a B flat right now, where is it? And being able to instantly recall it, which is useful, of course. Being able to recall where is the ninth of the chord that's being played in the background and I'm going to solo, where's the ninth? Where is that right now? When the chord changes and now you want to find the major seventh of that chord, where is the major seventh of this chord? That's what my resource is on. It's about helping you to find the function of the notes in the chord that's being played as the chords change. Okay, because the function will tell you what the emotion of the note, the basis of the emotion of the notes going to be. Okay, so knowing where B flat is is, is useful important, and important. But knowing the ninth over a minor chord is important for different reasons because it indicates what the emotion is likely to be. So the free resource I have for you, which you can download for free right now, will help you to do that as well. So the two different ebooks here go very well together. They're complementary and uh, they make for a really good uh, one two sort of combination there. All right. So I want to thank everybody for hanging out here today. And thank our guest, Dr. Tomas Zilio. Thank you for having me. To details on negative harmony and also for sharing the uh, the um, your YouTube playlist on more videos there. Great questions in the chat from everybody. Thank you who, for those who have participated. Uh, good to see you all. Thank you, Doctor. Thanks for having for um, you know sharing all that cool stuff with everybody and how to apply it and how it works. All right. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.